Hey guys, Orlando Santiago here. Welcome back to my app. I'm here in New York City and I have my model today is Melanie. Um, and what we're gonna talk about today is actually how to frame the brows so that you can get uh, the appropriate eyeshadow, right? So it's important that you obviously feature the brows in a way where it makes sense in structuring, uh, giving the brow detail, giving it uh, texture, right? And of course, Melanie right now, she has really, really light brows. So I think it's important to kind of frame them to set it up. So there's gonna be a part one and then a part two. Part one, we're gonna frame the brows in order for part two, which will be the eyeshadow, okay? So let's get started. So Melanie has a great frame, meaning the brow shape is sort of there. I just feel like it's not as visible. It's not enough detail. So what I'm gonna do is actually bring it out further. Um, again, we're gonna go back. And if you've seen some of the other videos and tutorials, uh, where I've had to go back and really sketch in the brows, you'll, you'll hear it again. Uh, pencil is designed to give you volume. Um, so if you wanna go back in, you wanna use your pencil as a guide so you can start to measure, which in this case would be, when you measure, you're really trying to start the brow somewhere, right where the beginning of your eye starts, right? Right up here, more or less. And then the arch is usually typically where the pupil is the end of the pupil, straight up and then the outer corner, right? The outer corner will determine how far down you should go so that everything is kind of symmetrical, okay? So let's sketch it in. So going back, I'm just gonna start to make some measurements here. So what you wanna do is you wanna keep in mind that it's gonna vary a little bit, but for the most part with someone with a normal spacing, right, of eye, then you're obviously gonna start right where the end of the eye or the beginning of the eye meets, come straight up, and you can draw your lines as a guide. However, this will change a little bit if you have slightly different spacing. So if you have a wide set eye, you wanna create the illusion of something that is a little closer, then you're gonna go a little bit closer in in drawing in the hairs. If you have closed set eye, then perhaps you might have to tweeze a few and start slightly further back, or maybe not tweezing if you don't want to, but just start to draw the density a little bit behind where the natural hair growth pattern is. Okay, so but in this case, we're good. We can go straight up just as a guide, right? And I also wanna stretch and I wanna see kind of where I should start to be drawing the hair. And also how far down I should come, right? Now remember, brow is part of a person's personality. You have to be careful you don't give them another personality, right? I've seen it a lot. And I think that's where you have to listen to the client and let them tell you about who they are. If it's the first time you're working with that client, then they can kind of pretty much tell you how they like their brows. For example, Melanie, um, well, you can tell me, Melanie, well, how do you like normally, how do you like your brows? I just like to fill in the empty spots, give them just a natural shape because like you said, it's there, it's just not. Right. Not as pronounced as I'd like it. Exactly. Keeping it natural, not too thick, not too dark. Right. So with that being said, I, I can kind of tell after a while, especially working with clients, um, it's either when the brows are this sparse, it's either because they like no brows or they just can't fill them in. Right. Um, so you notice that I'm just really sketching in. I'm trying to create the same illusion of hair. Right. So I'm going to go now, look straight. And right there, see that where that arch meets? The end of the pupil is exactly where I'm gonna to start to curve my arch just a little bit. Okay. And now it's not about how much or how dense I can get her brow with pencil. Remember, pencil is gonna be limited, meaning it's gonna create the illusion of volume, but it's not gonna create the illusion of depth. You need something totally different for that. Now. Some people ask, what about gels? Well, gels are great too. Like, for example, it's no different than a gel liner. A black gel liner will carry you a certain amount, but it's sometimes will create a lot of um, attention. So if you have a, a brow that is full of a gel liner, it's usually because you need something that's a little bit more waterproof, or you're really trying to emphasize a color. It's like Auburn gel brows are amazing, right? So there's certain things, or there's a reason or a precision that you're using that versus a pencil or some shadow. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is just extend this a little bit more. Again, taking my measurement, and I'm really looking at how far I should go. Okay, 
take your time, sketch in a few, and there you have it, right? And what last thing I do is, so I can see the height. So right here is where I really kind of make sure that the brow has the perfect height, okay? Turn this way, good. There we go, so we have a really good structured brow, okay? But for more depth and detail, I'm actually gonna change and I'm gonna use a shadow. I'm using an angle brush, okay? And with this angle brush, it's great because now I can go back and press in a little bit more color. And it doesn't have to be a strong brown, especially because she doesn't have a lot of brow. So she's going from no brow to like a really strong brow. That's gonna be a little bit too dramatic for her. She's not gonna feel comfortable. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the lightest of the topes, right? And maybe combining them. Okay. And I'm just gonna go right over the base or the bottom portion of her brow. Maybe I can take a little bit of a brown, deeper brown, and just at the base, just to give it a little bit more volume. Now what you also wanna do is, even though there's not a lot of hair there in reality, right, because we sketched it in. So take a look. So you really wanna just go ahead and see that if you just take a comb, right, a brow brush, a spoolie, um, what you can do is actually create and simulate real hair. So in other words, if you treat it like real hair, it will look like real hair. So even though a lot of this is pigment and color and pencil, but if you actually brush it in that same direction and treat it like hair, it will soften and look much more realistic. See that? So you see the one side versus the other. One looks obviously has more density and much more realistic, right? So now the combination again of pencil and a little bit of powder. Now you have volume and you have depth. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. Okay, so as you can see, I've just finished the uh, right side of the brow, um, basically just to match the left side. So what that was is all about uh, the texture. The texture was really designed to be soft and beautiful. I used obviously pencil and a little bit of powder, not just one over the other, because she really needed both. So with that being said, I was able to frame the eye to prep it and get it ready for eyeshadow. So one of the last things that I love to do is I actually will go back with a highlighter. So when I say highlighter, it's something that actually just highlights. Again, I didn't do any neutralization under the eyes. I didn't really start on anything else. I'm still staying with the brow. So part of the brow, when you highlight, right, uh, it actually brings the shape out a little bit more. So for example, no different than we were talking about in several other different videos, uh, texture, right, shimmer versus matte, next to each other, they vibrate. Uh, contouring, highlight, next to uh, contour or lighter next to dark, they bring each other out just the same. So in this case, I'm actually going to use a softer highlighting pen. And now that the brows are a little bit darker, I'm gonna go right underneath and just highlight just a bit. And what that will do is just bring the brow bone forward. Okay. Turn. Yeah. Not only can you help to um, adjust your shape if you feel like you're a little bit off. This will help kind of erase the shape that you don't want, but also at the same time you're highlighting. See that? So it looks great, looks soft, looks really natural, um, and it just really helps bring the brow bone forward. You can go above if you choose to. Okay. Okay, see that? Just with that highlight right there, all of a sudden her brow bone just went, boom, came up a little bit, came forward. Right, so I'm going to just diffuse that out and blend it, okay? And it's really important to work on brows first before applying eyeshadow. I mean, if it's a structured eyeshadow, then yes, you need to do your brows first. Only because without that, it's kind of like, it doesn't give you a, stop and, uh, a start and stopping point. It kind of just keeps going. And you really can't tell um, as to where your shadow is really gonna end and where it's going and it's just kind of, doesn't really make sense. There's no structure to it. So not only that, I've added more structure. 
I've added by adding a little bit of the highlight around the brow. Now I can see the highlight and the brow, which is the point. And it looks realistic and it feels amazing. Great. Beautiful. Very nice. Good. And she I'm loves them. I'm obsessed with them. <laughs> well, there you go. Case in point, right? If the client loves it, then obviously we've done a good job. So this is a great way to kind of go back. And now this is a little bit detailed and we've structured a lot here. So if you need to play this video over and over again, uh, just so that you can see the importance of how this really works, because, you know, as you can see, um, I'm going to different lights and different camera angles and either way, it still looks great. It feels realistic. It feels structured. And when you go back and see her from the very beginning, you'll see that from there to here, it's a process, but it's a process that's very doable if you're choosing the right products. Okay. So thank you guys for joining us in this first part of the segment uh, for eyes, which was basically just structuring the brows to create a frame for eyeshadow. And uh, stay tuned for the next part.